We're going to begin tutorial number five, threads and semaphores, with uh, this top part, the header includes, and also semaphore uh, object that we're going to use. Each thread we're going to give a name, Joe, Betty, Fred, Darlene, and so on. And here's a couple variables, next ID and is taken, we're going to use in order to get the next uh, name and a number for the thread. As to where to begin on threads, uh, there's a lot out there for the theoretical aspects of what a thread is. In a nutshell, a thread contains a control flow That's a, that is a path of execution. When the thread runs, it will be just as if another process is running concurrently while your program continues. You can fire up another thread and repeat this over and over, creating a new background subtask for each thread object in your program. Of course, you'll have to plan out your programs with care, given all these concurrent processes running around. Now, the first thing you need to do is to subclass from the thread object. Thread underscore O, as usual, Z directory objects end, typically end with underscore O. That's almost universal. This is an abstract virtual function in the header file, so you, this is a, the one mandatory thing you need to do. Setup and cleanup are done for pre and post processing of each thread. In function, as all Z directory programs, starts with Z start and ends with Z finish. I'm going to create a file called myfile.txt and then I'm going to close it so it'll be an empty file and I allocate the semaphore there's a single semaphore that we're using for the file that we're going to write to one file for ev everything all threads write the, to the same file and here we're going to allocate a whole bunch of threads the num threads is four in this case I'm going to allocate a few extra just in case and after we create the file we simply call run now we don't want the main program to exit immediately. I'm going to tell the last thread to terminate. This won't terminate it. It'll just give an instruction for it to terminate. And then we're going to wait for it to, to terminate with the wait call. Now I need to fill in the functions for the thread class that I'm creating, fWriteThread. Setup is going to be called when the thread starts up, and this is how we allocate our names and IDs. We're going to go through this is taken array and look for the first one that's zero and set it to one and grab the name and ID and assign it to these internal variables my name and my ID. Real simple. At the end, if it's the last thread, I'm going to sleep 20 seconds. This is kind of a kludgy thing, way to do it, basically, for the main process to, uh, to wait for all the threads. I wouldn't recommend doing it this way, but just, just for simplicity, or uh, we're just going to do it. The next function is the process. Now, this is what each thread is going to do. In this case, we're going to loop three times index is a variable internal to the thread instance we're going to get a random number of seconds to sleep that's what these three lines inside the for loop is about and I'm going to make sure that it's between 0 and 9 get the modulus of 10 and, and I'm calling sleep I'm not calling the global sleep function I'm calling the thread member function sleep which is absolutely different it, puts only the thread to sleep. Use that, don't use the sleep call. If you use and after the thread wakes up, we're going to check to see if it's been instructed to terminate if uh, it lags it here. Now, notice that we're going to return immediately. It'll return 1 if it's been instructed to uh, terminate. If not, we're going to continue and go to this write to file function where we write uh, a line out to the file and that's that's the entire processing 
Now the right to file, this is really where most of the code goes and it's basically formatting stuff. And this is a bunch of formatting where we're taking a string object and we're going to print the ID, then we're going to get the ID number, put a ring it, write it to a buffer, we're going to pad it out to eight characters so that we have nice pretty alignment in the output. Then if it was put to sleep, we're going to print how many seconds. And after that, we're going to look at what the action variable was and print whether it's start processing or finish. And finally, here's the uh, critical section for us, our one semaphore. The semaphore is guarding the file. And the way this works is that w the thread is going to call enter. If some other thread is inside this enter leave block, it'll block. The thread will wait until another thread does the leave, which is done right here. And we're going to open the file write to it with an F puts and then we're going to close it. By having a single file descriptor instead of multiple ones it uh, actually makes it less complicated and uh, uh, that's the whole program. This is about the simplest case of a multi-threaded application that I could come up with. It's threads too. Threads 1 was a more grandiose version of the same program. Okay, it succeeded and let's took a, take a look at the uh, command line window here. And let me just run it straight. And there you have the output of uh, the three threads, four threads that are running, Joe, Betty, Fred, and Darlene. As you can see, I've made it so that they're all aligned. When we call setup, we print action start. And in the processing part, uh, we'll, we'll print the uh, name, ID, and how long each thread slept, random number. Go back to the code. and. Process acts as a callback, and we could have called it run, but uh, in servers we have process message. I thought this might be more standard. So let's run it again, and then, and each time I click on this, it tells me the operating system tells me the file's been modified. And maybe that's it. Uh, Darlene finished. She's the last one here. And that's the whole thing. So uh, that's how you use threads in the Z directory. We couldn't make it any easier. Be sure to go to www.vetrasoft.com, download this code, download the Z directory if you haven't done so already, and uh, it'll make C programming a lot easier. Thanks for joining.